today I've got a uh, review sample that I was sent to take a look at. Um, they didn't pay me for this and they haven't asked me if, uh, if they can review the video. Um, they just sent me this for review. So let's take a look. It is, as you can see on the box, an infrared camera. Specifically the model Xtherm 2 uh, T2S Plus. I don't know a whole bunch about this. They sent me a couple of links to take a look at, um, but mostly they're just sale pages. So we'll just have to experiment with this. What do we got here? Thermal Eye, Razor Sharp. Um, okay, yeah, that's just product information and sale stuff. This looks a little bit like a quick start guide. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, what do we have in here? A vinyl sticker, okay. A smaller vinyl sticker, okay. Um, we have a USB-C 90 degree male to straight up female. And we have this nifty little case here. Similar to the sort of semi-hard cases I'm getting for uh, multimeters these days. And there is the camera. So this has the logo and says infrared on the back, USB-C on the side, and a little kind of soft rubbery lens cap and the lens. Similar to on the box, it says Xtherm 2. Um, it says the 12 micrometer lens and it says it's 256 by 192. I assume that is the uh, picture resolution of it tiny little thing looks like it's about two and a half centimeters on each side and about two and a half centimeters that way as well okay let's take a quick look at this little manual here or quick start guide or whatever it is it calls itself a manual okay uh, that side just shows the various models that they have this is the one that we got here um pixel size 12 micrometers resolution 256 by 192 focal length four millimeters Oh, well, so it can do macro, okay. Field of view, uh, 42 degrees by 32 degrees. And it can measure between minus 20 Celsius and 450 degrees Celsius, plus or minus 2%. All righty then. Um, we have on here, we have software installation. Just go to the smartphone app store. Uh, device connection connected to a USB or a lightning port. Yeah, it did mention it. They have both an Apple version and an Android version. I got the Android version because that's what all my devices are. So it looks like you just grab the uh, the app from the App Store of your favorite operating system. Um, it has an adjustable lens. Oh. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. So adjustable focus, I assume. Cool. Uh, compliance statement, whatever service hotlines and a website so here's the website and here's the one that we have the t2s plus it looks like they're selling it for about 350 dollars american directly on their website however they did send me some links to amazon both .com and .ca which will have different prices and uh, delivery and whatnot if you don't want to order direct from their website Oh yeah i see there's an accessory package showing here and i've got that as well so i'll have to look at that in a second so here's some specs, basically what we already saw, uh, 25 hertz refresh rate, or I guess frame rate, that's, it's not a high speed camera, but it's not supposed to be. Um, everything else looks about the same as we've already seen. And in several places they've mentioned this 8mm macro adjustable lens that they claim will let you look at a 0201 resistor. Oh yeah, and it says it's got a picture in picture mode, that's kind of cool. Most of the cheaper cameras don't have a visible light camera in addition to the infrared, so I'll have to play with that in a second. So here's that accessory pack that came with it, and it's got a fair bunch of stuff in it, too. We'll quickly look at that. What do we have here? Um, micro USB to USB C, a little holder thing. Okay, sure. Well, I guess that. Yeah, okay, that works. Uh, lens cloth, cool little handly thing here. Ooh, a pistol grip handle with a quarter twenty uh, screw thread on the top. That's nice. 
Oh, and a female quarter 20 screw thread on the bottom as well, so you can tripod mount it. And then there is this guy. So that looks like a phone holder adjustment clampy do thing. Okay, and this looks like it could clamp onto there. I don't see any manual or anything with it. Um, that is standard GoPro kind of mode there. And then this can screw onto there. Okay. So I guess sort of like that. Let me just grab a phone here. All right. So that clamps onto there. That's fairly solid. I guess this dude clamps onto here. I'm not quite sure what that sock is other than just to protect it. But we'll go with that. And then I am going to, because this is an older phone, use the micro USB, or mini, micro I think, to plug into there. And I'm just going to quickly jump online and install the app. So now that its software is installed, let's plug that in. Open the software. Allow it to take pictures, allow it to record audio, and allow it to write files. Okay, uh, okay, loading. Hmm. Wonder what that says. Um, I'm guessing that it probably says, well, I don't know. Um, what does that do? Okay, there it is. No picture. Oh, right, lens cap. <laughs> Oh, hey. What is it aimed at? Focus. Oh. It's upside down. Hang on. Well, that's a little awkward. Let's put on, go on something that's got some heat to it. My coffee mug. Okay. Well, so it's, looks like it's in a black and white mode right now. I'm just going to poke at some of these that looks like video recording okay modes here what do we got um whoa don't know what that did uh, what does that do don't know okay so that one gives me a um, a center point, so my coffee mug is about 35 degrees right now. Right, oh, and you can see the level of my beverage. <laughs> what else we got over here? Uh, be nicer with a more detailed manual. Okay, so this is giving me multiple spots. It's giving me a center spot, a cold spot, and a hot spot. Okay, so the bottom of my coffee cup is the hot spot. Back there somewhere is the cold spot. Kind of bouncing around. All right. That's reasonable enough, I guess. And hopefully this is being recorded so you can actually see this. Hopefully. Uh, what else we got in these menu, in this menu here? That seems to be, so what modes have we got there? Ah, we have color palette modes. Okay. So right now it's white hot. There's black hot, iron rainbow. I'm going to move my coffee mug in front here. Uh, so there's iron rainbow, uh, rainbow high contrast. Oh, wow. Straight up rainbow and iron gray. I'm going to go with iron rainbow for no particular reason. And what else we got here? Temperature units, correction, reflection, uh, humidity, emissivity, distance. So right now it's kind of focused at one meter out. Okay. Uh, I'm going to save that and I should be recording all of these changes while I'm doing it. Uh, turn the camera on. Oh, okay. That gives me the visual camera in the corner. Is that just, that's just my phone's camera. Okay. But that should be pretty close to what we're looking at. Uh, switch. Can't allow that. Uh, watermark, auto shutter. Timer, English, other language, product name, etc. Okay, so we'll go back to this. And let's put the three spots on. Got a cold spot, uh, the center spot, and the hot spot. Of 
course, the, center, the hot spot is my coffee cup. I suppose I should just play with this for a while and uh, go wandering around and uh, seeing things. But I, I mean, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's thermal cameraing. I do like this picture in picture. That is kind of cool. Okay, so welcome to the utility room in my basement. You can see my hot water tank right in front of me. And that is probably where I'm going to get the highest contrasts right now. Um, you can see down here on the floor, where are we down there, uh, is the concrete floor, so 12.6 Celsius. The insulated jacket of the tank, right in around there, so 20 Celsius. And up here is a pressure relief, which is just a metal chunk that goes right into the tank. So that's the hottest. That's about right. Okay. And then there's the pipes coming out the top. Let's look over above the dryer. There's the vent pipe going up and outside. And as we follow it closer to outside, you see that it does get fairly cool. I probably should insulate that, I would think. Might uh, help keep a little bit of cold air out of the basement. Cool. Useful information. How about we look at the beer fridge? Uh, what, are the, what temperature is the beer? 3.9 to 4 degrees Celsius. That's reasonable. Then there's a little ice making compartment up in the corner here, which is below freezing. Cool, as it should be. Oh, what's this? I didn't even open that. Laser sight? What? I didn't know it came with a laser sight. That's interesting oh, Allen key oh that is uh, what is that kind of amount is that oh duh that just mounts right on there okay and then it needs a battery right okay this thing seems to want uh, LR44 otherwise known as 357 cells and I've got three of them in there and here we have a nice little laser dot, all right, just like that, and then we can get back to playing again, making it look even more military and tactical. Hmm. So I've been experimenting, I've tried it, this uh, camera on various different devices that I've got. Uh, this one is the oldest phone that I've got around here. It's a Samsung Galaxy S5 with Android 7 on it. It's a 2014 vintage phone, and it worked just fine on there. I also use it on my uh, newest phone, which is a Samsung Note 20, and it works fine on there too. No problems at all. I've tried it on this phone that I'm using for my camera right now. Um... And it is a Samsung S8 from about five or six years ago, and it works fine on there. And I've tried it on this uh, Samsung Tab 2 tablet down here, which is the second oldest device I've got right now. Uh, and it runs, as you can see, but it doesn't work well. I don't have the menus uh, off to the side to choose modes and stuff and but it will record and it will take pictures and stuff like that unfortunately you just can't change modes so all in all that seems to be a pretty reasonable little thing i like this accessory pack here although it does look a little bit too tactical for my likings i'd probably take the the um laser sight off because i don't think it does anything useful for me and i've got it on and i can't actually see it it's right in front of my finger there, and I can't see it on either camera, so I don't think it's adding a whole lot to the experience. As a kit, I think that's a reasonable thing. It's nice and small. You just pack it in there with the one cable that you need and take it with you if you just wanted to do basic inspections and stuff. Um, they market it as being good for electronics. Well, let's just take a quick look at a circuit board here. Hang on. So my USB load is set up and it's drawing about 2 amps out of the 5 volts. And as you can see on there, the two MOSFETs on the back have different temperatures, significantly different temperatures, 
so you can tell which one's working harder, which would be very handy for troubleshooting something that's, uh, that's drawing too much current to find out very quickly where the extra current's going. Or you could use it for looking at the wires that are feeding it that are far too small to carry that level of current. I think I'm going to get some use out of that in the future. I'm pretty pleased with that. The laser sight, I think I'm going to take off here because, as I said, I don't see it giving me an awful lot of benefit. Uh, your mileage may vary, of course. Especially if you calibrate it in to aim the same as the other two cameras. Thanks to Paragear, who is the distributor of uh, these X-Infrared cameras, for sending this to me so that I can show it off to you guys. I will put a whole bunch of links down in the description below. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to jump into the comment section and, uh, and chat about it. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.